Pocket course of calculus. So in the first two sessions, we have discussed about continuity and differentiability. We have seen different kind of problems in continuity and differentiability. So in this particular session, we will be starting with application of derivatives. So we'll do a quick revision of the concepts of application of derivatives. Like for example, we'll be dealing with increasing and decreasing functions. We'll be dealing with stationary and critical points. And then we'll be learning about local maxima and local minima, global maxima and global minima. And accordingly, we'll be solving a few problems on that particular concepts. Okay. So before we start, let us wait five minutes so that the students can join. So in the meantime, you guys can uh, tell me how is your preparation going on for your CBS examinations? I hope you guys are preparing very, very well. And as I told you in each and every class, the revision is very, very important. Please revise the subjects. Keep on revising it. Have Make a special notes on each and every chapter so that it will be very quick for you to revise the things. So let me see. Let me start the chapter. Let me start this particular session within five minutes so that the students can join. Okay. Chalo. So in the meanwhile, you guys can tell me if you have any doubts, if you can have any, hi, hi Tanay, hi, how are you? How is your preparation going on? Nice, good, very good. So do you, uh, so in the last two, like in the last two sessions on this calculus, do you guys have any doubts or you guys have any feedback for me so that, you know, I could, uh, Improvise it. I could take your feedback and uh, make sure that the next time I don't repeat the same mistakes again. Or if you have any doubts, you can just ask me now because uh, we can just wait for five minutes so that the students can join again. Hello, hello, Rano. Hello, sir. Hello. Sunil, hi, hi from YouTube. Hi. So, see, what I thought is from today, uh, daily I'll be telling you a tip on uh, as examinations are approaching. So what I thought is, okay, let me give you a tip each and every day so that that can be very useful for you in the examinations. So what I'm telling you, I will not tell you but I'll tell you this tip at the end of the class. Okay. So, okay, Sunil, Sunil, hi, hi, Sunil, hi, hi. Okay. So how is your preparation going on, Sunil? How is your preparation going on, Rano? Is it fine? <clears throat> Uh, Rolle's theorem, how to know continuity? Okay, in Rolle's theorem, how to know continuity? See, first thing is that it depends upon the equation. You have to see the equation. For example, if it's a polynomial equation, you can directly say that, you can directly write the statement that all the polynomial functions are continuous, right? So we can directly state in that way. It totally depends upon that particular function which you're dealing with. According to that function, you have to write it For example, you take an equation like y is equal to ln x. We know that ln x is continuous. So, you have to that ln x is continuous in its entire domain. Okay. That statement is very, very important when you are dealing with Rolle's theorem. First, you have to write down the continuity. Then, mention about differentiability. And then, you have to find out f of a equal to f of b. Then, you have to find out a point which is f dash of c equal to 0, which lies in that particular interval. Okay. Aditya Pandey. Uh, yeah, any doubts, Sanai? Any more doubts in this particular concept? No doubts? Okay. So, should I start this class today? Should I start this session now? Okay. So, let me start this session today. Today's session, I think you guys know about the, today's particular session is about application of derivatives. Okay. So, again, I am uh, giving you a quick recap of what I have done within this uh, four or five minutes. So, in this particular session, I'll be dealing with application of derivatives. I'll be dealing with increasing and decreasing functions, critical points, stationary points, local maxima, local minima, global maxima, global minima, and we'll do uh, certain problems related to this particular concepts. Okay, chill. So the first thing, the first thing, the question which I want to ask you guys in this particular session is, do you know the geometrical meaning of derivatives? Can anyone, can anyone tell me the answer of this one? Do you know the geometrical meaning of derivative? For example, if I take a function, okay, if I take a function y is equal to, you can just see here, y is equal to f of x, okay. Then if I find dy by dx, what is it graphically representing? Slope, okay. Aditya, Aditya Pandey is saying it is slope, exactly right. It is slope. For example, you can just see here, 
so this is your x axis okay and this is your y axis and if i take a curve in this particular way which is y is equal to f of x okay now if i draw a tangent at this particular point let me take a point as a comma b clear at a comma b if i draw a tangent in this particular direction then how is the slope represented by the slope of this tangent is represented by dy by dx at at x is equal to a and b that is the definition or geometrical meaning of derivative okay i think you guys in the first year in the first year we have discussed about first principle of derivative right what is first principle of derivative dy by dx is basically equal to that is f dash of x is equal to limit limit h tending to 0 okay f of x plus h minus f of x divided by divided by h yes or no hi jayesh hi so this is your first principle of derivative which is limit h tending to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h see what is this graphically representing graphically kya represent kar raha hai yaha pe dekho ek bar so if you just see this particular equation which is y is equal to f of x okay y is equal to f of x you can take two points here this is one point and this is your second point okay so ye point kya hai yaha pe main ye ye kisko main x comma f of x le lunga okay this point is x comma f of x and let me take this point as x plus h comma f of x plus h any doubts in this case See, I'm trying you to, I'm trying you guys to explain the geometrical meaning of first principle of derivative. Okay, let me take a next nice page. I'll explain in this particular way. You see this one. So in this particular graph, okay. So I'll take a curve in this way. This is your first point, which has taken as x comma f of x, right? And this is your second point, which I'm taking it as x plus h comma f of x plus h. Right now, if I join these two points, you observe this one. If I join these two points, what is this line called as? Can you even give me the answer of this one? What is this line coil called as? If I join these two points, chord, very good, perfect. It is called as chord, or sometimes we also call it as secant. It is called as secant. We call it as chord. Chord or secant, both be the same. Clear? Yep. Right. Perfect. So in this case, x comma f of x, x plus h comma f of x plus h. What is this distance? Can anyone give me this distance? Ye distance kya hoga yaha pe? Ye distance kya hoga? What is this distance basically here? The distance between x and x plus h kya hoga? It is nothing but h, right? Right? If you observe your differentiation, if you observe the formula of first principle of derivative, it is stating that limit h tending to 0, f of x plus h, okay, minus of f of x, divided by h what do you what is the meaning of this one what is the meaning of limit h tending to zero you're going on reducing this distance okay so when you're going on reducing this distance the line which is secant is going to become what can anyone give me the answer of this one if you're going on reducing the distance of h agar ye distance up toda 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 bulke aisa decrease karte jayega to ye jo bhi aapka chord hai yaha pe what does that become the chord will tend towards which one? It's a tangent, right? So it is nothing but a tangent. At which point? At which point? X comma f of x. Perfect. Any doubt in this case, the geometrical meaning? That is why we say that whenever we write dy by dx, it is basically representing the slope of the, the slope of the tangent. Clear? Is the geometrical meaning of derivative clear for everyone? Is there anyone having doubt in this particular case? Is this clear for everyone guys? Should I continue to the next concept? Clear? No doubt? Perfect, perfect. So yes, hello. So let me move on to the next concept now. See, that is what I explained here. You can just see the statement here. Okay. So that is what I'm repeating it once again. The derivative measures the steepness of the graph of a function at some particular point. You can observe here. So this is your first principle of derivative, right? Where limit h is tending towards 0. Uska matlab kya ho gaya ki? Agar yaha pe dekh sakte hai, this is your secant, right? This is your secant. If you are decreasing the distance, this line 
will become a tangent at this particular point which is nothing but the derivative that is the geometrical meaning of derivative is this clear so whenever see if you don't understand anything if you are not able to understand this secant and tangent concept ab sirf ye yaad karo ki dy by dx is nothing but is nothing but the slope of the tangent that's it the slope of the tangent if you remember this single statement it is more than enough for you to solve any kind of problem okay chalo so let me move on to the next concept now you can just see the next concept now increasing and decreasing function okay so how do you say whether a function is increasing or how do you say whether a function is decreasing it's very very important okay so yahan pe dekho i'm drawing a curve in this particular way which is y is equal to f of x now to find out whether this particular function is increasing or not what you are going to do you take a single point any point on this curve okay and draw a tangent here yahan pe ek tangent draw karo and observe the slope of this one exactly very good very good aditya exactly the slope kya hoga yahan pe it is basically theta which is acute the angle which you are going to get is acute angle right and we know that for acute angle tan theta is what tan theta is basically positive so what is tan theta we know about tan theta from geometrical meaning of derivative is nothing but dy by dx so what is the first definition of increasing function the dy by dx your d y by dx should be greater than 0 so this is for increasing function to be more specific this is actually indicating strictly increasing okay this is actually indicating strictly increasing function okay and if you want to find out only increasing function it would be dy by dx greater than or equal to 0 so much me aa gaya if it is strictly increasing it will be only greater than 0 if it is uh, only increasing it will be greater than or equal to 0 is this clear for everyone so in the same way i think it's very simple for you guys to find out about decreasing function for decreasing function you can just see this graph now i'm taking a decreasing function in this way for which y is equal to f of x here you take any point here draw a tangent at this particular point and observe the angle you observe this particular angle this theta is basically obtuse angle right and we know that for obtuse angle what you can say here sir we can say that increasing function gives maxima uh, no see uh, for the time being i'm not linking this increasing and decreasing functions to local maxima and local minima but as the session goes on further we'll be discussing about uh, that local maxima and local minima but for time being please concentrate only on increasing and decreasing okay so yahan pe kya ho raha hai this is basically obtuse angle right for obtuse angle what about tan theta what is your tan theta tan theta is negative so your dy by dx i can say from this that your dy by dx is basically less than 0 so this is indicating this is indicating strictly decreasing okay so ye kya indicate kar raha hai strictly decreasing indicate kar raha hai or what about dy by dx less than or equal to 0 what about dy by dx less than or equal to 0 it is indicating only decreasing function it is actually indicating only decreasing function clear yeah? so make sure that you don't make mistakes here kyunki like most of the students they miss do they do mistake at this particular point if in the question he is asking about strictly increasing or strictly decreasing use open brackets okay and if he is if he is asking about only increasing and decreasing use closed brackets is this clear for everyone now any doubt in this particular concept today any doubt in this particular concept clear again i'm repeating it if it is strictly decreasing or strictly increasing it would be open bracket if it is only increasing or decreasing it would be a closed bracket clear chalo so but sir hindi yeah sure sure jayesh i'll try to mix up hindi and english so that you guys would feel comfortable okay so let me move on to the next concept now so can anyone tell me what is critical point and stationary point critical point or stationary points ke bare mein koi bata sakta hai first uh, what is stationary point what is a stationary point what is a stationary point what do you indicate by stationary points no what is a stationary point critical point derivative is zero okay critical point derivative is zero no no aditya your definition is not completely correct it is partially correct critical point matlab derivative is equal to zero wo to sahi hai but it is not the complete definition it's only the partial definition you have to be more specific 
critical points and stationary points what is the difference between these two so what is critical point is whenever you find f dash of x and equate it to 0 the points which you're going to get or let me say the values of x which you're going to get are called as stationary points okay understood this one when you find f dash of x and equate it to 0 the values which you're going to get are called as stationary points then what about critical points what about critical points then? If I want to discuss about critical points, you have to understand that critical points matlab, yeah, exactly, you're right, f dash of x equal to 0 or I can say that f dash of x is not, is not, or I can say f of x is not differentiable. f of x is not differentiable at, at critical point f dash of x is not differentiable at critical point you see the difference between stationary points and critical points okay so what is stationary point indicating it is just indicating the points where f dash of x is equal to zero right and what about critical points critical points are indicating the points where f dash of x is equal to zero or f of x is not derivative at that particular point for example aap yaha se dekh sakte hai. you can just see this particular yaha pe dekho Pe kya ho gaya? Here f dash of x is equal to 0. Okay. So this is a stationary point. You can call it as a stationary point as well as a critical point. But if you see this particular graph now, yaha pe dekho, yaha pe ye point ke paas, is it at this particular point your f of x is derivative? At this particular point your f of x is derivative or not? No, exactly. So what I can say, this point is called critical point. It is not a stationary point. This point is called as a critical point. So much me agya difference. What is the difference between a stationary point and a critical point? Is it clear for everyone? Yes, yes. So make sure that you don't make small mistakes in this. Stationary point matlab f dash of x is equal to 0. Critical points matlab f dash of x is equal to 0. Or where f of x is not differentiable. Right? Now tell me, tell me this particular statement. Okay. Are all the stationary points critical points? Yes or no? Again, I'm repeating the question. Are all the stationary points critical points? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, perfect. No, Aditya, why no? Shruti, yes, perfect. Aditya, why it is no? Yes, see, all the stationary points are critical points. Exactly. But can I say all the critical points are stationary points? No, exactly no. So, aapko samaj mein aagya ki what is the difference between a stationary point and a critical point. See, this stationary points and critical points are very important because we are going to apply this concepts in finding local maximas and local minimas. Clear? Okay. So, let me move forward now. You can see the examples here. So, this is an increasing function and this is a decreasing function because it's an increasing function kyunki yaha pe kya ho raha hai? You can just see here at this your f dash of x is basically becoming zero. Yaha bhi dekh sakta hai. Yaha pe aur yaha pe your f dash of x is becoming equal to 0. Clear? So that is why we call it as increasing or decreasing function. That is, yaha pe condition kya hoga? f dash of x is greater than or equal to 0. And the condition here is f dash of x is less than or equal to 0. But if you take this particular function into consideration, at each and every point you can observe that there is a value. The value of the slope of the tangent is always greater than 0. Right? So how are absolute uh, maximum and uh, local min maximum different? Exactly. Uh, Aditya, I'll be coming to that particular concept later. We will be discussing the all the concepts of local maxima and global maximas in this particular session only. Don't worry about it. First, let us complete this increasing and decreasing. Then we'll move on to that particular concept. Okay? Chalo. So see here. So in this case, what is the condition you're going to get? F dash of x is greater than 0. Yaha pe condition hai kya aega? F dash of x will be less than 0. See here? Chalo. So now, let me go on to the next one now. Now, this is the first problem for you in this particular session. Find the intervals in which the function which is given in this particular way is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. Chalo, start karo. I'll give you five minutes. Please be ready with your pen and paper. So start solving this particular question. This is one of the previous year's question which has been asked in your board examination. So start doing this question now. f of x is equal to 3 into x raised to 4 minus 4x cube 
minus 12x square plus 5. Is it strictly increasing or strictly decreasing? Strictly increasing a consa interval may strictly increasing a consa interval may strictly decreasing a you have to tell me. So start doing this one now. <clears throat> Start doing it. Aditya, Shruti, Jayesh, Tanai. Do you understand the question, guys? Do you understand the question, guys? If you have any doubt, free feel to ask me. Don't, don't feel shy. Free feel to ask me. Whatever. It might be very small doubt, but make sure that it is getting clarified. Okay. So, strictly increasing, strictly decreasing. Can't be able to find the intervals. Okay. Do it, do it. Try it. If you are not coming, then I will tell you how to do this one. Uh, shiny Nayak strictly increases. But it's what? Ask. Sir, equation is quadratic. It's actually a biquadratic equation. Uh, it's a biquadratic equation basically. Sorry, cubic. Yeah. So, how can we calculate zeros of a three degree equation? Okay. You have to understand You have to understand this question. Okay. Let me start doing this. Okay, I'll just start doing this question. You see this particular question. Find the intervals in which the function, which is given in this way, is strictly increasing, strictly decreasing. So, strictly increasing ke liye condition kya hoga? f dash of x is greater than 0. So, let me find out f dash of x kya milega yaha se mujhe? 12 x cube, okay, minus of 12 x square, okay, minus 24 x is greater than 0. Here. So, in this case, I take x as a common, okay. If I take x as common, what is basically left out here? I can take actually 12x as common. What is left out here? Kya hai pe x square minus x minus 2 is greater than 0, right? Now, see here, 12 into x, okay, this is basically 12 into x. If you factorize this one, I will get x square minus 2x plus x minus 2 greater than 0, right? So, here I can write in this way, it will be 12 into x, okay. This can be written as x minus 2 into x plus 1, okay, which is greater than 0. Is this clear for everyone now? Yes, exactly. x plus 1 into x minus 2 into 12 into x is greater than 0. Perfect. Now, in this case, you have to say, what are the stationary points in this case? Can anyone tell me what are the stationary points in this case? x is equal to 0, comma 2 comma minus 1 are the stationary points yes or no yes or no x is equal to 0 2 and minus 1 stationary points exactly now take the number line abhi ek number line le lo yaha pe 0 yaha pe hoga yaha pe 2 hoga aur yaha pe minus 1 hoga now you worry you only worry about this particular function now okay or else do one thing you write down what is f dash of x okay f dash of x is equal to 12x into x plus 1 into x minus 2 clear now you from this number line observe one thing for all the values which are lesser than minus 1 aapka f dash of x ka symbol kya milega what is the symbol you are going to get for f dash of x is it positive or negative again i am repeating it for all the values of x which are lesser than minus 1 what is the symbol of f dash of x is it positive or is it negative? Negative? Is it negative, guys? It's a very simple thing. For example, you can take this x is equal to minus 2. Lelo, pe substitute karo. This is going to be negative. This term will be negative. This term will be negative. This term will be negative. Ye term bhi negative, ho jayega. Teen negative se, negative into negative into negative. So, this say is basically negative. Do you understand? Is this clear for everyone? Right? Any doubt in this case? Perfect. Abhi kya karna hai? You take it between minus 1 to 0. Between minus 1 to 0, you find out whether this function is positive or negative. f dash of x, is it positive or negative? Now, between minus 1 to 0, is this particular function f dash of x positive or negative? See, it's a very, very, see, I'm again I'm telling you, application of derivatives both easy hai. Increasing and decreasing functions, is se zyada easy hai. The only thing is that you have to play with it, play with the numbers. You have to choose a number, substitute the number in the given equation and see what symbol you are going to get. Okay, Jayesh, close bracket, negative. Positive, first thing is that, okay, see, for example, for x is equal to minus 0.5, you substitute this in this particular equation, ye negative hoga. 
ये पॉजिटिव होगा और ये नेगेटिव होगा क्लियर सो वन पॉजिटिव टू नेगेटिव सो यूर गोइंग टू गेट ए पॉजिटिव इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस क्लियर राइट टू टू अनडिफाइंड ओके देन वॉट अबाउट जीरो टू टू जीरो टू टू के लिए क्या होगा जीरो टू टू के लिए क्या होगा कैन यू टेल मी वॉट अबाउट जीरो टू टू इज पॉजिटिव आई डोंट थिंक सो इट इज नॉट पॉजिटिव इट्स नेगेटिव एक्जैक्टली बिटवीन जीरो टू टू दिस टर्म इज पॉजिटिव दिस टर्म इज पॉजिटिव बट दिस टर्म इज नेगेटिव सो ये नेगेटिव होगा एंड अब टू इट्स गोइंग टू बी पॉजिटिव क्लियर एक्जैक्टली परफेक्ट सो नाउ कैन यू टेल मी वॉट इज द इंटरवेल ऑफ स्ट्रिक्टली इंक्रीजिंग स्ट्रिक्टली इंक्रीजिंग के लिए क्या होना चाहिए आपका एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स बट स्ट्रिक्टली इंक्रीजिंग योर एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स शुड बी वॉट इट शुड बी एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स शुड बी ग्रेटर देन जीरो राइट सो द इंटरवेल्स विल बी माइनस वन टू जीरो एंड टू टू इन्फिनिटी परफेक्ट टू टू इन्फिनिटी is your interval for strictly increasing and what about strictly decreasing what is strictly decreasing intervals here it is basically minus infinity se leke minus 1 and 0 uh, to 2 clear perfect union 0 to 2 yes perfect perfect i should be likh sakte hai nahi to aise bhi likh sakte hai and 2 to infinity perfect any doubt in this case guys any doubt in this case guys is this clear for everyone how to find when a function is given for you how to find the values or how to find the intervals where it is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing kya karna hai stationary points find karo number line le lo and find out where it is positive negative positive negative kahan pe positive ho raha hai kahan pe negative ho raha hai aapka f dash of x and accordingly you can find the intervals clear okay chalo so let me move on to the next question now find the intervals this is a very very important question this has been asked almost like 3 to 4 times in your previous cbsc examinations uh, board examinations so it's good to i can see you today yeah perfect good good jayesh good so start doing this question now find the intervals in which the function given by f of x is equal to sin x plus cos x for 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2 pi okay so you have to find the intervals where it is increasing and you have to find the intervals where it is decreasing start doing this question now If you don't, if you have not, if you're not able to understand the question, please ask me. I'll again repeat the question. I'll try to, I'll try to make sure that you guys would understand this question here. It's a very simple question, but uh, still, it's a very important question. This has been asked for four and six marks. Very frequently, this question has been asked for four and six marks. Sir, so that's uh, two. What is two? That is two pi. This is basically two into pi. Two into pi. Okay, right. So two n, it is two pi, right? So start doing it, start doing it. And uh, the other thing is that, uh, like, I find uh, many students in case of, especially in the case of application of derivatives, like when they are doing with uh, increasing and decreasing functions and local maxima and local minima. they they do very small silly silly mistakes for example open bracket ke jagah mein close bracket likhte hain sometimes they directly write the equation right directly write the values like minus 2 to minus infinity or let me say minus 2 to infinity without uh, actually finding out in between values without actually finding out the behavior of in between values of that particular function so what i'm saying is please don't be in a hurry when you're dealing with increasing and decreasing functions क्वेश्चंस और लोकल मैक्सिमा एंड लोकल मिनिमा क्वेश्चंस ओके आराम से करो क्वेश्चन की क्वेश्चन को अच्छी तरह समझो एंड देन स्टार्ट सॉल्विंग द क्वेश्चन राइट ओके सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन डेड यून गेट द इंक्रीजिंग इंटरवल ओके इंक्रीजिंग इन जीरो टू फाइव बाई फोर यूनियन फाइव फाइव बाई फोर टू टू फाइव परफेक्ट 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 आदित्य यूर राइट आदित्य यूर परफेक्टली राइट एंड वॉट अबाउट डिक्रीजिंग Can anyone tell me what about decreasing function interval? What about decreasing function interval? For decreasing function interval, what you're going to get basically in this case? What about other students? Are you getting the answers? Okay, you see this question. I'll start solving this question now. So first thing again, the same method. एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स फाइन कर रहे हैं मुझे तो ये क्या होगा कॉस एक्स माइनस साइन एक्स कॉस एक्स माइनस साइन एक्स एंड वॉन्ट टू फाइंड द स्टेशनरी पॉइंट राइट तो इट्स गोइंग टू बी जीरो आदित्य यूर राइट परफेक्टली 
it is decreasing in pi by 4 to 5 pi by 4 perfect aditya so from this i can write tan x is equal to 1 okay so from this i am going to get x is equal to pi by 4 and what is the other value can anyone tell me what is the other value a value to pi by 4 okay and see we are we are we are we are taking the interval between 0 to 2 pi okay so one value is pi by 4 what about the other value can anyone tell me what about the other value 5 pi by 4 exactly because the tan is positive in the first quadrant and the third quadrant so first quadrant pi by 4 third coordinate may pi pi by 4 perfect so these are your stationary points perfect now f dash of x is equal to cos x minus sin x okay cos x minus sin x now this is 0 okay let me take this is your pi by 4 okay and this is your phi pi by 4 okay this is your phi pi by 4 perfect now see this one between 0 to pi by 4 between 0 to pi by 4 how is your f dash of x behaving is it positive or is it negative between 0 to pi by 4 how is your f dash of x behaving is it positive or negative if you have any doubt you can take a small example there yaha pe pi by pi 0 se pi by 4 ke beech mein kaun sa angle rahega pi by 6 rahega substitute this pi by 6 in this i'm going to get root 3 by 2 minus 1 by 2 and this is obviously positive clear so f dash of x is greater than 0 for the interval 0 to pi by 4 so ek interval mil gaya which is 0 to pi by 4 right and what about the other interval again if you compare from 5 pi by 4 to 2 pi okay from 5 pi by 4 to 2 pi you can observe that cos x minus sin x is always again positive so what is the other interval in this case union 5 pi by 4 to 2 pi clear in this particular interval also your cos x minus sin x is going to be positive clear and what about the decreasing decrease or i so this is f dash of x greater than 0 and what about f dash of x less than 0 what about f dash of x less than 0 if you take the interval between pi by 4 to 5 pi by 4 you can say that cos x minus sin x is actually negative because you can see here pi by 4 to 5 pi by 4 tuk, you can take any value substitute that value in this f dash of x and then you'll understand that you're going to get a negative value so for f dash of x less than 0 this is going to be this is basically going to be pi by 4 to 5 pi by 4. Clear? Right, perfect. So, any doubt in this question? Any doubt in this question, guys? Is this clear for everyone? Perfect, good. So, see, this is a very, very important question. Uh, like, frequently they have asked this kind of questions. Maybe not the same question, but same model questions. Okay. So, make sure that you don't make any mistake in this kind of questions. Right. So, should we move on to the next question then? Should we move on to the next question or next concept? Sir, uh, can, we can apply also sine of A minus B form. Uh, sine of A minus B form in this particular, you can do it, yes, exactly, but why do you want to do it? Because uh, what I feel is this is more easy way of doing this question, right? You have to remove stationary points hai, and then you have to find out the intervals. It's more easy way, right? rather than converting this into sine of a minus b and then doing all that stuff this is more easiest method what i feel is this is more easy to do and exam mein thoda confusion bhi nahi aayega aapko kahan pe bhi clear any doubt in this case okay chalo so let me move on to the next concept now let me move on to the next concept now so your next concept is local maxima and local minima now let us discuss about this concept in a detailed way okay aaram se discuss karte hain iske bare mein both acha topic hai aur both simple topic hai okay so you see this particular function here now i'll take a function in this way so let me draw a graph for you so this is your graph which is why sir you're missing my message yeah jayesh yeah jayesh fine i'm not missing your messages i'm seeing all your messages man so y is equal to f of x is your graph okay sir uh, how long will the class last today it's basically for one and a half hour but uh, if it could have like uh, let me let, let us check out let us see whether we could wind up uh, you know with wind up within one hour then i'll just stop at one hour or else if we want more time we can continue up till one and a half hour okay any more doubts here okay so now listen to this one now y is equal to f of x is the graph given for you right 
so now because i have my board exam tomorrow it's okay fine fine aditya uh, you can just listen to this for one hour if you feel that the whatever other concepts are there if you know those concepts you can just leave okay so for the time being please listen to this concept now so for y is equal to f of x okay so by seeing the graph aapko graph dekhte hi pata chal raha hai ki yaha pe ek maxima hai okay this is your maxima at this particular point okay at this particular point let me say this is x is equal to a you are having a maximum okay let me continue this graph and draw it in this way okay yahan pe dekho abhi yahan pe ye point ke paas dekho x is equal to b ke paas what is what is there here minima exactly to yahan pe aapko kya mil raha hai minima mil raha hai now let me continue this graph now aur ek bar continue karunga aur abhi yahan pe le lo na graph now observe this particular point which i take it as x is equal to c what is this point now this is also a maxima yes or no this is a maxima and if you take this point into consideration let me take a other point you take this particular point into consideration now ye kya hai x is equal to d this is minima right this is basically minima now what is the difference between this maxima and this maxima you're getting the logic here yahan pe dekho ye bhi maximum hi hai ye bhi maximum hai yahan pe ye bhi minimum hai aur ye bhi minimum hai okay so now this maximas are basically called as local maximas yahan pe bhi local maxima bolte hai isko these are local maximas these are local minimas these are local minimas okay but okay so this is when you are discussing at a single point to conclude this or agar agar humko thoda aur detail mein jayenge is cheez ke bare mein i can say that if you are discussing about maxima or minima at a single point you are basically going to get a local maxima or local minima right abhi kya karunga mai ek interval le lunga aapke liye okay i'll take an interval between x is equal to e se leke x is equal to f this is your interval okay so you, are, you guys uh, i think you guys are getting this one right i'm taking the interval between x is equal to f to x is equal to e now in this interval in this interval from x is equal to f to x is equal to e this is not local maxima now ye kya ho jayega can you tell me what about this now is it local maxima or what about this one now it's actually exactly very good it is absolute maxima or we call it as global maxima we call it as global maxima in the same way abhi ye ye kya ho jayega will it be local or global this one this particular thing it will be global exactly so this is not local this is global minima or i can say absolute minima or absolute minima so that is the difference between local maxima and local minima and global maxima and global minima it's a very simple concept if you are discussing at a single point kabhi bhi yaad rakho ki waha pe aapko local maxima aayega nahi to local minima aayega okay but once you take interval into consideration for example from some interval to some interval okay that is from one point to other point in that case you are going to get global maximas and global minimas okay any doubt in this case guys any doubt in this case guys i think you guys can differentiate what is a local maxima and a global maxima and local minima and global minima right is this clear for guys is this clear for everyone any doubt in this case See you. Okay, chalo. So let me move on to the next one then. Okay, now first thing we'll be discussing about local maxima and local minima first. So first, let me discuss about the method of local maxima and local minima. Okay. So is ke liye hamare paas two methods hai. Okay. You can just see this particular side here. So yaha pe dekh sakte hai. This is local maxima. This is also a local maxima and this is a local minima. See you. and if you take interval agar yahan se yahan se le lunga main interval ko then this will be global maxima clear now now what i'm going to do is so again you can just see here global maxima ke liye if i'm taking the interval from here to here in that case this will be the global maxima i think this is very very clear for you guys now okay chalo so now now let me discuss about this particular stuff now so for finding local maximas and local minimas you have to there are two methods for finding this one okay the first is first derivative test okay first derivative test right and the next one is second derivative test okay so first hum kya karenge 
we'll discuss about first derivative test and then we'll go to second derivative test okay so you can just see here for first derivative test now how to remember the formulas of first derivative test okay so what you're going to do is you just listen to me i'll tell you a very very simple method okay isko matlab aapko yaad karna ka zarurat hi nahi hai exam mein exam mein you can directly derive derive the formulas of first derivative test okay you just see this graph now you see this particular graph here what is this point can anyone tell me what is this particular point here what is this particular point here can anyone tell me what is this particular point no i am asking you the point i am not asking whether it is local maximum or local minima exactly f dash of c equal to 0 so this is basically a critical point or stationary point yes or no so let me take x is equal to a k pass you are getting a critical point or let me say a stationary point okay now take a point to the left side region of a okay and draw a tangent yahan pe ek tangent draw karo tell can you uh, so what is the angle you are going to get here what is the angle you are going to get here is it positive or negative angle or positive slope or negative slope basically this is a acute angle right and so iske bare mein slope ke bare mein discuss karna hai to kya bol sakta hu iske bare mein positive exactly so i can say that for the values x less than a for the values x less than a what about f dash of x f dash of x should be greater than 0 clear now take a point to the right side region of a and draw a tangent here yahan pe ek tangent draw karo आपको देखो क्या मिल रहा है यहाँ पे स्लोप क्या मिल रहा है यहाँ पे टीटा इज बेसिकली ऑफ ट्यूज ये सो नो टीटा इज ऑफ ट्यूज सो यहाँ पे आपको क्या मिल रहा है एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स लेस देन जीरो सो वॉट इज द सेकेंड कंडीशन फॉर एक्स ग्रेटर देन ए एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स इज बेसिकली लेस देन जीरो सो हाउ टू से दैट एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट देर इज ए लोकल मैक्सिम नो हाउ डू आई कंक्लूड दैट एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए यहां पे एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए इफ यू आर गेटिंग ए लोकल मैक्सिम देन वॉट शुड आई से देर योर एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स शुड चेंज इट सिंबल फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव टू नेगेटिव दैट्स इट एग्जैक्टली वेरी गुड टन आई परफेक्ट सो आई थिंक यू गाइज हैव अंडरस्टूड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट राइट सो लोकल मैक्सिम के लिए क्या करना चाहिए फर्स्ट यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट द क्रिटिकल पॉइंट ओके फर्स्ट फाइंड आउट द क्रिटिकल पॉइंट देन वॉट यू गोइंग टू डू इज around that critical point to the left side region it should be positive to the right side region it should be negative and the slope should change from positive to negative agar positive to negative change ho raha hai then you are going to get a local maxima clear now can now i think it's very simple for you guys now i'll give you a task please derive the condition for local minima chalo so start karo local minima condition derive karo abhi sabhi log aapko hi bol raha hu main Please derive local minima condition. Local minima condition क्या होगा कैन एंड टेल मी द लोकल मिनिमा कंडीशन ना एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू ए वॉट इज लोकल मिनिमा कंडीशन पहले नेगेटिव उसके बाद पॉजिटिव एग्जैक्टली सो सेम थिंग यहां पर नेगेटिव होगा आपका स्लोप और यहां पर पॉजिटिव होगा सो फॉर फाइंडिंग लोकल मिनिमा फॉर फाइंडिंग लोकल मिनिमा नो आदित्य पांडे एफ डबल डैश ऑफ सी ग्रेटर देन जीरो That is for second derivative test. Okay, उसके बारे में हम discuss करेंगे. But first, first thing is that we'll first uh, get clarified about this concept of first derivative test. Okay, पहला हम first derivative test के बारे में बात करेंगे. Then we'll go to the second derivative test. So local minima, you see this local minima, sir. We don't have this in Goa board. Ah, uh, Pratik, I think I don't have any idea about Goa board. But uh, this particular course is for CBSE examinations, board examinations. Okay, so for local minima के लिए क्या होना चाहिए? The slope should change from negative to positive. Clear? Chalo. So this is your first derivative test. You can just see this particular slide here. You can just see this one. So first derivative test के लिए क्या होना चाहिए? Less than zero, greater than zero. So आपको क्या मिलेगा? Local minima मिलेगा. Greater than zero, less than zero. You're going to get a maximum. Clear? So any doubt in this case now? Any doubt in this case, guys? Is this clear for everyone? Okay. So perfect. so let me let me again uh, clarify this one and see if the symbol is not changing for example you take this uh, for, if you remember y is equal to x cube graph okay the graph is something like this the graph aisa hoga kuch at x is equal to 0 can you tell me is it having local maximum or local minima at x is equal to 0 for y is equal to x cube graph is it having a local maxima or local minima is kiya pe yahan pe Is it having a local maximum or local minima? 
Can anyone tell me is it having a local maximum or local minima? At x is equal to zero. No, it's not. It not seems both. It does. It's not having. It's not having local minima or local maxima. Exactly. Exactly. Very good. At x is equal to zero, यहाँ पे local minima भी नहीं है, local maxima भी नहीं है. Clear? So that kind of points where it is neither local maxima nor local minima. उसके लिए क्या होना चाहिए? Your symbol doesn't change. Okay. For example, this f dash of x will be changing from negative to negative, or it will be going from positive to positive. In that cases. There will be no uh, maxima nor minima. Okay, that is your this particular concept. And always remember, यहाँ पे देखो ये ये graph देखो सभी लोग. You see this particular graph. If you see the nature of curve at this particular point, यहाँ पे concavity downwards है. Okay. और ये point that is at x is equal to zero के बाद concavity upwards हो रहा है यहाँ पे. So the points where the nature of curve is changing are called as पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन समझ में आ गया पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन के बारे में समझ में आ गया इज इज क्लियर फॉर एवरी वन द डेफिनेशन ऑफ पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल डेफिनेशन द पॉइंट वेर द नेचर ऑफ द कर्व इज गोइंग टू चेंज फॉर एग्जाम्पल सर आई डोंट अंडरस्टैंड प्लस टू प्लस इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग सी मैं क्या बोला था अगर पॉजिटिव से लेके नेगेटिव तक जाएगा यू गोइंग टू गेट ए मैक्सिम राइट And if you go from negative to positive, you're going to get a minima, right? अगर ऐसा ये दोनों cases के अलावा, if you're getting positive to positive, okay, or negative to negative, in that cases, it the function is having neither maxima nor minima. Clear? So point of so this is clear for you. And what is point of inflection? The point where, sir, uh, if f dash of x equal to zero, then will it be a point of inflection? No, no, no. F dash of x is equal to zero will not be a point of inflection. f dash of x is equal to zero. आपको मिल गया. When you're doing f dash of x equal to zero, you're basically going to get critical points or stationary points. Okay. Point of inflection कहाँ पे मिलेगा? जहाँ पे local maxima या local minima ये दोनों भी नहीं हैं. और जहाँ पे आपका nature of curve है, वो change हो रहा है. For example, you can just see here. यहाँ पे concavity downwards था, right? And here it is becoming concavity upwards. So that kind of points are called as uh, point of inflection. Clear? आदित्य पांडे f डबल डैश ऑफ x f डबल डैश ऑफ x आई कम टू दैट पार्ट ओके डोंट वरी विद इन टेन मिनट आई कम टू दैट पर्टिकुलर पार्ट देर ओके चलो सो दिस इज वॉट डिस्कस हियर यू कैन जस्ट सी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन हियर सो यहाँ पे मैंने डिस्कस किया देखो सो दिस इज ग्लोबल मैक्सिम ग्लोबल मिनिमा सो दिस इज योर पॉइंट ऑफ इन्फ्लेक्शन कॉन्सेप्ट वेर द कर्व द कॉन्केविटी इज चेंजिंग ओके नाउ सो दिस इज फर्स्ट डेरिवेटिव टेस्ट ये आपको सभी लोगों को पता चल गया Now let us solve a question on first derivative test. Okay, uh, so see this one. So this, see this question. Jesh, what is your problem? So see this question now. Find all the points of local maxima and local minima, as well as the corresponding local maxima and local minimum values for this particular function. You have to do it by first derivative test. Please don't apply second derivative test to this question. Get me the values, the points of local maxima and local minima using first derivative test. चलो start करो. Start करो. तनय, प्रतीक, आदित्य, जयेश. Do you understand the question, guys? Do you understand the question, guys? How can I know that f of x is uh, negative or positive? f of x नहीं, f of x नहीं। ध्यान से समझो भाई, यहाँ पे f of x के बारे में discussion नहीं हो रहा है। We are discussing about f dash of x, okay? f dash of x positive है और negative है। इसके इसके हिसाब से हमको local maxima या local minima पता चलेगा। For example, अगर आपका f dash of x negative positive से लेके negative change हो रहा है, you are going to get a local maxima. अगर नेगेटिव से लेके पॉजिटिव चेंज हो रहा है यू गोइंग टू गेट ए लोकल मिनिमा क्लियर एंड इफ इट इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव टू पॉजिटिव और लेट मी से नेगेटिव टू नेगेटिव ओके इन दैट केस योर नेदर यूर गोइंग टू गेट नेदर लोकल मैक्सिमा नॉर लोकल मिनिमा आई थिंक दिस इज क्लियर फॉर यू नफ चेंज कैसे समझा वी हैव डन द क्वेश्चन वी हैव डन द क्वेश्चन यू कैन जस्ट रिफर टू दिस क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द कंप्लीशन ऑफ दिस क्लास यू कैन रिफर टू दिस क्वेश्चन यहाँ पे किया देखो हमने 
ये क्वेश्चन में किया था देखो ये क्वेश्चन हमने डिस्कस किया था देखो यहाँ पे चेंज हो रहा है देखो पॉजिटिव से नेगेटिव नेगेटिव से पॉजिटिव एनी वे यू आर ट्राई टू अप्लाई द कॉन्सेप्ट टू दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन यू टू दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन ट्राई टू अप्लाई द कॉन्सेप्ट एंड देन यू कैन इजिली फाइंड आउट दिस वन डोंट वरी आई आई एक्सप्लेन दिस क्वेश्चन हाउ टू सॉल्व इट देन यू कैन यू गेट ऑल द क्लैरिटी इन दिस राइट डेट यू गेट द आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन कहा पे लोकल मैक्सिमा कहा पे लोकल मिनिमा हो रहा है वॉट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग टू डू इन दिस क्वेश्चन Can anyone tell me what is the first thing we have to do in this particular question? Yes, derivative. That is, uh, you have to find the stationary points, right? Differentiating. Perfect. So let me first find the differentiative. That is, first find the derivative. This ka. Pehla uska stationary point nikalenge ham log. So let me differentiate this. I'm going to get three into x minus one whole square. Two pe maximum mil raha hai apko. Okay. Let me check it out. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. Into x plus one whole square. Plus x minus one. Yes, exactly. Product rule: x minus one whole cube into two into x plus one. Okay, and this we have to equate it to zero. So from this, what I can say is, I can take uh, x minus one whole square into x plus one as common. Okay, so what is left out then? Three into x minus one, right? Three into sorry, three into x plus one, perfect. Plus two into x minus one. So this will be left out. Is equal to zero. So from this, I'm going to get x minus one whole square into x plus one. Okay, into this is three x plus two x, which is five x, and this is basically plus three minus two. I'm going to get plus one is equal to zero. So this is your f dash of x. F dash of x. Tell me, was it wrong? It's fine. It's fine. That is what I'm saying. Don't be in a hurry. We have so much of time. Don't be in a hurry. Aram se karo ap. तो so, यहां से आपका स्टेशनरी पॉइंट्स क्या मिलेगा x इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस वन एंड माइनस वन बाई फाइव आर द स्टेशनरी पॉइंट्स इज इज क्लियर फॉर एवरीवन वन एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन माइनस वन एंड माइनस वन बाई फाइव आर द स्टेशनरी पॉइंट्स ओके सो आई थिंक आई हैव सीन फ्यू स्टूडेंट ज्वाइनिंग लेट डोंट वरी दिस इज अ क्लास ऑन अप्लीकेशन ऑफ डेरिवेटिव स्पेसिफिकली द क्लास इज ऑन इंक्रीजिंग एंड डिक्रीजिंग फंक्शन लोकल मैक्सिम एंड लोकल मिनिमा ग्लोबल मैक्सिम एंड ग्लोबल मिनिमा so this question is on first derivative test okay you can just start solving the question so these are the stationary points okay so x is equal to 1 minus 1 and minus 1 by 5 are the stationary points okay now what i'm going to do is i'll draw the number line for you you can just see here yahan pe minus 1 by 5 hoga yahan pe minus 1 hoga aur yahan pe kya hoga yahan pe 1 hoga perfect perfect bhavesh good so 1 minus 1 minus 1 by 5 Now, what is your f dash of x here? Again, I'm writing the function for you. F dash of x, how much did we get? How much value did we get? How much value did we get? F dash of x's value, x minus one whole square, okay, into x plus one, okay, into five x plus one, okay. So this is your f dash of x. Now, tell me, how is your f dash of x behaving, or what is the symbol of f dash of x? For all the values less than minus one, can anyone tell me the symbol of f dash of x? That is whether it is positive or negative for the values lesser than minus one. Negative, negative will be positive. Will be negative. Will be sure. See, don't worry about this particular term. This is x minus one whole square. That is, it is always positive. So this will be negative. This will also be negative. So what will happen? This will be negative. Clear? Perfect. Now. Tell me between minus one to minus one by five. Between minus one to minus one by five. Tell me the symbol of f dash of x. Is it positive or is it negative? Positive, positive will be. Think about it once again. Negative or positive will be. But first thing, you can take an example. Minus one say like this is basically minus point two. You can take an example of minus point five. This is minus point five. Yeah, so it will be positive. Right? This is going to be positive, and what about this one? Phi into minus point phi is basically minus point two phi plus one, which is positive. So positive into positive, यहाँ पे आपको positive मिलेगा. समझ में आ गया? See if you are finding any difficulty, you just take a value between this two intervals, okay? Between minus one and minus one by phi, take a value, substitute that in the given function, easily you'll get the symbol, okay? Then what about minus one by two phi to one? What about minus one by five to one? Is it positive or negative? 
बिटवीन माइनस वन बाई फाइव टू वन नेगेटिव एक्सैक्टली वेरी गुड इट इज नेगेटिव इट इज नेगेटिव परफेक्ट एंड वॉट अवर्ट वन आफ्टर वन वन के बाद क्या होगा यहां पे पॉजिटिव परफेक्ट सो दिस इज पॉजिटिव समझ में आ गया राइट परफेक्ट नो कैन यू टेल मी विथ विच पॉइंट यू आर फाइंडिंग लोकल मैक्सिम एंड इट विच पॉइंट देर इज ए लोकल मिनिमम लोकल मैक्सिम के लिए क्या होना चाहिए पॉजिटिव से लेके नेगेटिव तो चेंज होना चाहिए योर एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स शुड चेंज फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव टू नेगेटिव सो इन दिस केस एट विच पॉइंट इट इज चेंजिंग फ्रॉम पॉजिटिव टू नेगेटिव एट दिस पॉइंट विच इज माइनस वन बाई फाइव सो एट माइनस वन बाई फाइव एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन बाई फाइव यू आर हैविंग वॉट ए लोकल मैक्सिम ए लोकल मैक्सिम एंड वॉट अबाउट दिस वन वॉट अबाउट दिस वन लोकल मिनिमा कहां पर है लोकल मिनिमा के लिए हमको पता है कि इट शुड चेंज द सिंबल फ्रॉम नेगेटिव टू पॉजिटिव सो माइनस वन एंड वन सो माइनस वन एंड वन आर द पॉइंट वेर यू आर गोइंग टू गेट लोकल मिनिमा समझ में आ गया इज दिस क्लियर फॉर यू गाइस एनी डाउट इन दिस केस इज दिस क्लियर फॉर एवरी वन आदित्य तनई नो सर इज इट क्लियर या परफेक्ट परफेक्ट सो सी दिस आर द पॉइंट एंड सी अगेन इन दिस क्वेश्चन आपको लोकल मैक्सिम वैल्यूज और लोकल मिनिमम वैल्यूज भी पूछ रहा है तो क्या करना चाहिए एक्स इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन बाई फाइव सब्सिट्यूट इन दिस इक्वेशन यू गेट द लोकल मैक्सिम वैल्यू सब्सिट्यूट एक्स इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन एंड एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन इन दिस इक्वेशन यू गोइंग टू गेट द लोकल मिनिमम वैल्यूज समझ में आ गया इज दिस क्लियर आई एम नॉट डूइंग दिस पार्ट आई एम नॉट डूइंग द सेकंड पार्ट आई एम डूइंग ओनली द फर्स्ट पार्ट सेकंड पार्ट इज वेरी वेरी इजी You have to substitute this point in the given equation and get the answers. Clear? Okay, chalo. So let me move on to the next question then. Chalo. So is this clear for everyone about first derivative test? Any doubts in first derivative test, guys? Clear? समझ में आ गया सभी को? Okay. So now coming to second derivative test. Now discussing about second derivative test. Now for second derivative test. See, second derivative test is a very very easiest test. When you compare with the first derivative test, second बहुत easily हो जाएगा आपका okay? So क्या करना चाहिए second derivative test में I'll tell you the method of solving the functions to find out the maxima and minima using second derivative test, okay? तो पहला क्या करना चाहिए Same method. First find out f dash of x and equate it to जीरो okay? Then you're going to get the critical points or let me say stationary points, okay? You'll get the critical points or stationary points. then find out f double dash of x okay and substitute for example you got x is equal to a as a critical point when you have done this f dash of x okay equal to 0 okay now substitute this x is equal to a in this particular equation of f double dash of x that is find out f double dash of a if this is greater than 0 okay this is basically you're going to get a local minima at x is equal to a clear and if f double dash of a is less than 0 in that case you're going to get a local maxima you're going to get a local maxima at x is equal to a any doubt in this case now it's a very very simple criteria aapko it's a very simple criteria kya karna chahiye this is very common see this we have done in the first derivative test also First, you have to, sir. Can you please show the earlier page? Okay, I'll show the earlier page for you guys. This is about first derivative test, man. Pratik, this is about first derivative test. Now the discussion uh, discussion is about second derivative test. Okay, okay, sir. So you can just see here. First, क्या करना चाहिए हमको यहाँ पे? You have to find out f dash of x, equate it to zero, find the critical points. Okay, then you have to find out f double dash of x, substitute the critical points. and see whether you are getting greater than 0 or less than 0 for greater than 0 you will be getting local minima for less than 0 you will be getting local maxima clear and what is this geometrically representing i'll tell the geometrical meaning of f double dash of x okay so f double dash of x or it is actually d square y by dx square okay d square y by dx square is geometrically representing the nature of the curve okay अगर आपका कर्व ऐसा है जहां पे कॉन्केविटी अपवर्ड से दिस इज बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय डी स्क्वायर वाई बाई डी एक्स स्क्वायर ग्रेटर देन जीरो ओके एंड इफ यू हैव ए कर्व इन दिस पर्टिकुलर डायरेक्शन 
in this particular direction or in this particular way where your concavity is downwards it is basically represented by d square y by dx square less than 0 clear so this is the geometrical meaning of d square y by dx square isliye aapko dekho yaha pe when you take two concavity upward curves for example you see here yaha pe dekho yaha pe humko kya pata chal raha hai yaha pe yaha pe humko pata chal raha hai ki x is equal to a Sir, questions related to geometrical representations won't come in exam, right? No, don't worry about it. I'm just telling you this so that it will be helpful for you to understand the concept in detail way. But don't worry, uh, regarding the geometrical representations, they might not ask you in the subjective, I mean, boards may not ask you, but objectives may sometimes ask you. That is, what is the geometrical meaning of d square over dx square? It can be asked in objective type examinations, okay? So, here at x is equal to a, you can just observe here, this is a concavity upward curve and this is also a concavity upward curve. So that is why you observe this one. For f double dash of a greater than 0, we are getting a local minima. <coughs> and see this one now. If I take a concavity downward curve in this way, agar I say layer of my curve, at x is equal to a, at this particular point, yaha pe concavity niche hai aur yaha pe bhi concavity niche hai. Okay, so that is why for f double dash of a less than 0, <coughs> you are getting a local maxima. Clear? So if you want to remember in this particular way, you can remember in this way or else you just have to get this particular two statements into your mind that f double dash of a greater than 0 raega, it will be having a local minima. f double dash of a less than 0 raega, it will be having a local maxima. Clear? Okay. So now, we'll, uh, I'll just show you the statements here. So this is your first statement and this is your second statement. Sir, JE ke liye help karega na. Sure, sure. So once we complete this board examination scores, We'll be starting a course on JE, don't worry about it. So for the meanwhile, now see this particular statement, which is very, very important. Abhi ye, so ye statement dekho, which is very, very important for objectives. Maybe not for subjective, but for objective, this statement is very, very important. So if you got, if you get F dash of C equal to zero, okay? And if you get F double dash of C also equal to zero, in that case, what you're going to do is, you have to find out F triple dash of C, okay? And check the symbol of this one. Is this clear? So if you're getting f dash of c equal to 0, f double dash of c equal to 0, then in that case, what you have to do is, you have to find out f triple dash of c. If this is not equal to 0, if this value is not equal to 0, then you can conclude that it is having a neither. It is basically having neither. So I can say that it is basically having, so what I can say here, it is basically having neither maxima nor minima so basically it is having neither maxima neither maxima nor minima see how simple it is there is maybe point of inflection hota hai. Ha, hota hai. see for example i take a small example for you y is equal to x cube ka example le lunga yaha pe. Yaha pe aap kya karna chahiye? at x is equal to 0 you see at x is equal to 0 what is going to happen once you find dy by dx okay you're going to get 3x square equated to 0. So what is the critical point or stationary point you're going to get? x is equal to 0, right? x is equal to 0 is a stationary point or critical point in this particular case. Abhi kya karna chahiye aapko? You find out d square y by dx square. Okay? You're going to get 6 into x. Substitute the critical point. See what you're going to get here, which is 0. So you can observe one thing. Yaha pe aapka dy by dx bhi 0 ho raha hai. Or d square y by dx square is also equal to 0. And then, if you find out d cube y by dx cube, okay, if you find out d cube y by dx cube, you're going to get 6, which is not equal to 0. And as I told you, if f dash of c equal to 0, f double dash of c equal to 0, and f triple dash of c is not equal to 0, it is having neither maxima nor minima. Dekho, aapka y is equal to x cube ka graph aisa hoga. Yaha pe dekho, at this particular point, it is having neither maxima nor minima. And now we have proved the same thing using this particular concept of second derivative test. So much may And also you can observe one thing. You can just see here the curve is changing. Yaha pe concavity downward se, yaha pe concavity upward se. So we call this particular point as point of inflection. Yes, what is your doubt? Uh, d square by dx square se solve kaise karenge? It's very simple. See, this is dy by dx which is 3x square. Again, differentiate this term. So, 3x square ke differentiation kya hoga? 6 into x, right? So, from that you can easily understand this one. Clear? So, any doubt in the second derivative test concept? 
any doubt in the concept of second derivative test guys is this clear for everyone see the first two statements are very very simple very very easy okay sir please thoda geometry based questions sure i'll try to take this question see basically this course is on uh, board examinations so in board examinations uh, geometry based questions is zyada nahi tha almost like there are direct there there are direct applications of whatever we have heard now but uh, once we start the je course in that case i'll be taking the questions which are totally geometrically based then we'll we then we'll try to solve those kind of questions okay so see this particular question now see this particular concept here so this is clear for everyone everyone so the first one and the second are very simple but make sure that you remember this third statement which is very very important for objective type examinations clear so should i move on to the next one should i move on to the next concept or next question is this clear for everyone now okay perfect so see this one now the problems on second derivative test so see this question now find two positive numbers x and y such that x plus y is equal to 60 and x y cube is maximum see this particular model is very very important this particular model has been frequently asked in previous cbse board examinations so make sure that you do this question perfectly right without without doing any kind of mistakes in between okay so x plus y is equal to 60 xy cube is maximum so you have to find out the numbers x and y start doing it start doing it it's a very simple question <clears throat> x plus y is equal to 60 and x y cube is maximum find two positive numbers x and y such that x plus y is equal to 60 and x y cube is maximum uh <clears throat> drink some water sir sure jay sure i'll do it thank you i think i have seen some students joining now don't worry the class is on application of derivatives we are almost to the end of the class so we can just start solving this particular question without worrying about what happened in the you know whatever this particular uh, previous kya hua tha sir ne kya discuss kiya tha don't worry about all those things okay do we need to first differentiate xy cube uh that you have to tell me alexa what do you feel what do you feel that should i differentiate xy cube yahan pe kya pooch raha hai humko wo para aapko samajh samajhna chahiye you first understand this question he is asking that you have to find out x and y in such a way that x plus y is equal to 60 and xy cube is maximum xy cube aapko maximum hona chahiye in that way you have to choose the values of x and y how do we do this one x is equal to 40 and 20 uh, no no aditya no 40 and 20 is not a right answer 40 and 20 right nahi hoga isme uh, see here see this question now i'll try to solve this question in a very simple way 60 45 no 60 45 kahan se hoga bhai kaplan it's not that way you see this one 60 45 kahan se hoga aap hi socho x is equal to 60 hai to aapko x plus 5 15 45 exactly good that is what i'm thinking 15 45 is right perfect xy should xy cube should be less than 0 no yes very good xy cube should be less than 0 but uh, no xy cube should not be less than 0 it should be maximum xy cube should be maximum you are you are getting confused between second derivative test and f of x second derivative test mein f double dash of x should be less than 0 not f of x okay let me start solving this question now guys yes exactly tanay you are right tanay you are right tanay 15 and 45 is the right answer you say this question now x plus y is basically equal to 60 and xy cube here has given it as maximum okay so we have to maximize this term xy cube right so let me take this particular term okay for time being yahan se main kya likh sakta hu y is equal to 60 minus x likh sakta hu right so i can write this term as x into 60 minus x whole cube let me take this as f of x samajh mein aa gaya sabhi ko f of x is equal to x into 60 minus x whole cube clear now differentiate this f dash of x find karo isme se what are you going to get here 60 minus x whole cube 
plus x into 3 into 60 minus x whole square into minus 1 is equal to 0. From this, you are going to get the stationary points. So, you have 60 minus x square or you have 2 jayega. So, you are going to get what is remaining 60 minus x minus 3x is equal to 0. So, from this, you are going to get 4x is equal to 60. So, x ka value kitna milega yaha se? What is the value of x from this? x is equal to 15. x is equal to 15, right? So, x is equal to 15 hai. So, what is the value of y then? y is basically equal to 45. But see, you should not do it directly. You have to prove that it x is equal to 15. Aapko local maximum mil raya hai. You are getting a maximum value. So, kya karna chahiye? You have to find out f double dash of x. Can't we take x is equal to 60 minus 5? You can do it in that way also. You can do it in that way also. You can take x is equal to 60 minus y. In that case, you are going to get f of y equal to 60 minus y into y cube. Then you have to differentiate this. Yes, you can do it in that way also. You are right. So, in this case, after getting the value x is equal to 15, find out f double dash of x. Okay. Yaha pe aapko f dash of x mil gaya hai na? Isko, isme aapko f double dash of x find karna hai. And you have to substitute x, x is equal to 15. And see that you are going to get less than 0. If it is less than 0, then you can conclude that at x is equal to 15, y is equal to 45, you are basically going to get a local maxima. That is this x, y cube is basically having a maximum value. Samaj mein aagya sabhi ko? Any doubt in this question guys? Any doubt in this question guys? Is this clear for everyone? See, I am not doing the second part. First thing, I have done the stationary points. I got the stationary point which is x is equal to 15. So using second derivative test, if I want to prove that at this stationary point, if I have a local maxima, what I am going to do, I will first find out f double dash of x, substitute this point and then get the value. If that is less than 0, then I can directly conclude that at x is equal to 15, y is equal to 45, this particular value or this particular function which is x y cube is maximum. Clear? Any doubt in this concept? Is this clear for everyone? Should I move on to the next concept? Should I, should I move on to the next concept guys? Yes? Yes, Jayesh. Okay, fine. Yes. What about others? Aditya? Pratik? Yes? Okay, fine. Chalo. So, let me move on to the next concept now. So see this particular question now. Find the point on y square is equal to 4ax which is nearest to the point 11a comma 0. Understand the question. Understand this question. It's a very, very important question and a very easy question. But aapko samajna padega question mein kya diya hai exactly. So find the point on y square is equal to 4ax which is nearest to the point 11a comma 0. And for the students uh, who are uh, following this lecture on YouTube, hi, hi Ravikant, hi Altaf. I think you, I think uh, if you have any doubts, you can just uh, write down in the comments. I'll try to clarify your doubts. Okay. So find the points on y square is equal to 4ax, which is nearest to the point 11a comma 0. Start doing this question, man. Start doing this question. Should I start doing this question directly? I think, uh, or uh, will you guys try it? You're trying it, okay, fine. Do it, do it. Others do it. Pratik, do it. Very good, do it. Tanay, you're doing it. What about others? Yes, yes, do it, do it. I think these sessions are very very helpful for you guys because uh, it's like very quick revision for you uh, about all this uh, important chapters of calculus so that uh, you guys also you guys can also recapitulate all the formulas all the concepts so I hope uh, I feel that this particular session or this particular course is very helpful for you guys and if you have any feedback for me uh, you can you can just write it down in the comments I'll read it or if you want me to teach some more concepts or any other uh, different concepts where you are feeling difficulty, please mention it. I'll try to cover those concepts in the next classes. Okay. Okay, chalo. So, hmm. 
Did you get the answer, guys? Should I start doing this? I'll give you a hint for you. Okay, I'll give you a hint for you. Then you can do starting start doing this one. So find the point on y square is equal to 4ax, which is nearest to this particular point. So let me assume that that particular point is x1 comma y1. Okay, whatever point I'm going to consider, which is nearest to this 11a comma 0, is x1 comma y1. Okay, then what is distance formula? Distance is equal to under root of the distance between x1 y1 and 11a comma 0 is basically 11a minus x1 whole square plus y1 minus 0 whole square which is y1 square see how simple it is so this is the distance between this point and this point what is x1 y1 the point which we assumed on y square is equal to 4ax which is nearest to this particular point clear so we know that this particular point is on this curve so isme se main kya likh sakta hu y1 square is equal to 4a x1 likh sakta hu na kyunki ye point jo bhi hai this is present on this curve so obviously this point is going to satisfy the equation of this curve so y1 square is equal to 4a x1 so from this i can write d square is equal to 11a minus x1 whole square okay plus in place of y1 square i can write it as 4a times of x1 clear so now what i'm going to do is i have to find out the minimum distance ye jo bhi distance aaya mujhe isko mujhe minimum karna hai so to find out the minimum distance I have to find out x1. So basically, this is what question here? Exactly. You got stuck here. So see, I'll tell you. Abhi isko physically mat jao. Mathematically samjho isko. You don't take this into distance into consideration. Aap isko kaise le sakte hai? This is basically a function which you have to find the minimum value, right? Ye function ka aapko minimum value find karna hai. So what you're going to do here? We have two methods. First derivative test, second derivative test. So in this question, let me apply second derivative test. So what I'm going to do is, I take d square is equal to z, a function. So if d square is minimum, z is also minimum. Yes or no? If d square is minimum, z is also minimum. So first what I'm going to do here, I'll find out dz by dx. Okay. So let me see what I'm going to get here. I'll get 2 into 11a minus x1. Okay. Into minus 1 plus 4 into a equal it to 0 so that you'll get the stationary point okay so from this can anyone tell me the value of x1 please tell me the value of x1 from this what is the value of x1 from this can anyone tell me the value of x1 from this x1 ka value kya aega yaha se 11a minus x1 whole square plus 4a x1 have differentiated this this is basically 2 into 11a minus x1 into minus 1 plus 4a equal to 0 so I can write this as 4a is equal to, you're going to get basically 2 into 11a minus x1, right? So 2 ones, this will become 2 twos up. So I'll get x1 is equal to, what I'm going to get x1 is equal to 11a minus 2a. So x1 is basically 9a. 9a, exactly. Good, Pratik. It's 9a. It's 9a. 9. Sir, integration question and way to solve in next class. Exactly. I'll discuss about it. We'll, I'll discuss about what is what I'm going to teach in the next class. So for the time being, please concentrate on, uh, concentrate on this question now. So x1 is equal to 9a mil gaya hai, right? So now you got the stationary point, right? Abhi kya karna hai? Can anyone tell me what is the next thing I have to find out? You have to check out whether at x1 is equal to 9a, is this point, at this particular point, whether you are going to get a minimum value or a maximum value. So iske liye mujhe kya karna padega? I have to find out d square z by dx square. Clear? Yeah, exactly. Very good. So find out the differentiation of this one. What I'm going to get in this case, I'll get minus 2 into, kya aega iska? Minus 2 into minus 1 aega. That's it. Sir, minus 1 q multiply. Yaha pe dekho, yaha pe integrate, differentiate karo. 2 into 11a minus x1 into differentiation of the inside term, which is minus 1. Or yaha pe bhi, abhi dekho, yaha pe 2 into 11a minus x1 minus 1. Okay. So yaha pe minus 2 hai differentiation of the inside term kya hoga minus 1 so minus 2 into minus 1 kya hoga 2 which is greater than 0 which is greater than 0 so isme se hamko kya pata chal raha hai that at x1 is equal to 9a are you getting a maximum or minima can, can you tell me the answer of this one are you getting a maximum or minima exactly minima so my kya bol sakta ho ki at x1 is equal to 9a 
you are going to get a minimum value. So if x1 is equal to 9a, what is the value of y then? Substitute x1 is equal to 9a in this case. 9 4 is 36. So y ka value kitna milega aapko? 6a milega. So what is the point here? 9a comma 6a. Clear? So 9a comma 6a is the point which is nearest to the given point 11a comma 0. So this is the way you have to find for this kind of question. See, this is also a very very important model. I, I say, jo, I say jo, can you please repeat it? I did not get it. Sure. I'll do it once again. Uh, please uh, follow this now. See this question now. What I'm doing is I have to find a point on this particular curve which is minimum to this particular point. Right. So what I have done is I have taken x1 comma y1 as a point on this particular curve. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'll find the distance between this point and this point. Okay, d is equal to under root of 11a minus x1 whole square plus y1 square. Clear? So, what have I done? I have squared on both the sides. I got d square is equal to 11a minus x1 whole square. And in place of y1 square, I can write it as 4a x1. Okay, now it's totally a mathematical function which is in terms of d square. I have taken d square as z. Okay, because if d square is minimum, then obviously z is also minimum, right? So what I'm going to do now is that I'll first find the critical points or stationary points. So is ke liye kya karunga? dz by dx find karunga or equate it to zero karunga, right? From that I'll get the value of x1. After getting the value of x1 to check whether at this particular point it is a maxima or a minima, what I'm going to do? I have to find out d square z by dx square and check whether it is greater than zero or less than zero. In this case I'm getting greater than zero. So what does it mean? It means that here we are getting local minima. Mil raha hai. So at x1 is equal to 9a, when x1 is equal to 9a, your y1 value will be equal to 6a. So at 9a comma 6a, the distance between these two points is minimum. So I can say that this is the nearest point to this particular point. Any doubt in this question guys? Any doubt in this question guys? Is this clear for everyone? समझ में आ गया सभी को अभी क्लियर फॉर एवरीवन जयेश प्रतीक परफेक्ट परफेक्ट चलो सो लेट मी मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नाउ सो ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट कांसेप्ट व्हिच आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द नेक्स्ट कांसेप्ट जस्ट अ मिनट द नेक्स्ट कांसेप्ट व्हिच आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस इज अबाउट ग्लोबल मैक्सिमा एंड ग्लोबल मिनिमा ओके एज आई टोल्ड यू व्हाट इज द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन लोकल मैक्सिमा एंड लोकल मिनिमा एंड ग्लोबल मैक्सिमा एंड ग्लोबल मिनिमा लोकल मैक्सिमा लोकल मिनिमा you're going to discuss that at a single point. But for global maxima and global minima, you're going to basically discuss that in an interval. He has given the interval for you. This is the function and this is the interval given for you. Okay. Now, you have to find out the global maxima and minima. So, how to do this one now? How to do this particular kind of questions? So, listen to this. Listen to this question now. It's a very simple question. I'll tell you a very, very simple way for finding global maxima and global minima. Okay. So, pahala kya karna hai? Yaha pe dekho function kya diya usne? f of x is equal to 2x cube minus 24x plus 107. So, this is the function given for you. Right. So, what you're going to do basically here is you find out f dash of x. Okay. So, what you're going to get for this one? So, what do you get here? 6x square, 6x square minus 24, okay, 6x square minus 24, equate it to 0 and get the critical points or stationary points. So, what do you get here? x square is equal to, x square is equal to 24 divided by 6, no, it's plus or minus 2, don't make that mistake, 6, 4, x is equal to plus or minus 2, only plus 2, not only. So, what do you get here? Pratik, Kaplan? Okay, so, what are the stationary points in this case? One is minus two and the other one is two. Okay. And the other thing is that you have to take the end points into consideration. Aapko one bhi lena hai aur three bhi lena hai pe. Okay. Now what you're going to do is substitute. These are basically the values of x. Different values of x. Now substitute these values of x in this equation and find out for which value you're getting the maximum value. That will become the global maxima. For which value you are getting the minimum value, that will become a global minima. Samaj mein aagya? Is this clear for you guys? Okay, do it, do it, do it. I'll wait for you guys, do it. First, substitute all these values. x is equal to 1, x is equal to minus 2, x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 3. 
in this particular function and tell me the values what you're getting. If you have any doubt, please free, free feel to ask me. Don't, don't feel shy. Don't worry. There is no one to judge you here. You feel free. Ask whatever doubt you are having so that I can clear those doubts. Sorry, sir. I was uh, AFK. I don't. I'm not getting you, Tanay. What happened? Are you not getting the answer of this one, or uh, is there any problem? Any other different problem? Yes, Tanay. Others. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what is the value of? Uh, no, I was not there when you gave the question. Okay, it's fine. You can just start doing it from now. It's okay. So at x is equal to 1, at x is equal to 1, value kitna mil raha f of x ka? Can anyone tell me at x is equal to 1, what is the value of f of x you are going to get? 91, good. 91, perfect. Kya? 91, 75. Do answer ka se mil raha hai? Why? At x is equal to 1, kya mil raha hai? 91 ya 75. 104 minus 24 plus 2 kya hoga? I think it's not 91, man. Minus 2 mein zada. Minus 2 mein zada. Uh, first tell me at x is equal to 1, what is the value of f of x? 107 minus 24 plus 2. It's meaning 107 minus 22. So it's basically what? Uh, kitna mil raha isme se apke 75, 85, 95, 99, 22. So 97, uh, 87 and it will be 85. It's not 75. Exactly. Why you are doing such small, small mistakes? It's 85. At x is equal to 1. We'll basically get 85, 85, exactly 85. Bhavesh, right? Okay, perfect. Then at x is equal to minus 2. x equal to minus 2 ke pass. Can anyone tell me what is... Uh, yeah, Jayesh, you're right. Perfect, you're right. So at x is equal to minus 2, what is the value of f of x? 135, okay. At x is equal to minus 2, it is 135, perfect. And... Uh, is it 135? Sure. Yeah, perfect. And at x is equal to 2, x is equal to 2 ke pass kya mil rahe value? 139, okay f of x is equal to 139 at x is equal to minus 2 value kitna mil raha hai is it 139 or 135 165 165 okay at x is equal to minus uh, x is equal to 2 the value is 165 165 yeah 139 you guys are confusing me kya mil raha hai answer aapko sirf substitution hai kyu itna confused ho rahe aap no sir by mistake it's okay fine fine so at x is equal to minus 2, the value is 135. This is right. Is this right one? At x is equal to minus 2, f of x is equal to 135. Okay, fine. At x is equal to 2, kitna mil raha hai aapka value? At x is equal to 2, aapka value kitna mil raha hai? f of x ka value kitna mil raha hai? What is the value you're getting for x is equal to 2? No, sir, in our informal, uh, 75. Uh. Okay, 75, perfect. And at x is equal to minus 1, sorry, x is equal to 3, ke pas value kitna mil raha hai? At x is equal to 3, what is the value of f of x you are getting? f of x ka value kya mil raha at x is equal to 3? 89. Okay, fine. So, I got all the four values. Okay, 85, 135, 75 and 89. Now, compare all the four values. So, which one is maximum? 135. So, at x is equal to minus 2, you will be having global maxima. So, much mein aagya? you'll be having a global maxima and at x is equal to 2 the value is very very this value which you're going to get is minimum so at x is equal to 2 you're basically going to get a global minima you're going to get a global minima sir so right minus 2 i'm getting 171 ah the different different answers different different answers see that is what i'm saying please don't be in a hurry aram se karo hamare paas bahut time aur 10 minute bacha hai hamare liye don't don't worry it's okay so minus 2 is more exactly global maxima to minus 2 ea at minus 2 you're getting global maxima perfect it's okay uh, don't worry about the calculation part is the method clear for you guys is the method clear for everyone tanay jayesh kaplan prateek bhavesh is the method clear for everyone right so kya karna chahiye 
first find out the stationary points so you can just see here i got the stationary points as minus 2 and 2 and then you have to include the end points that is 1 and 3 so take this values of x substitute that in the given function and find out the values so jaha pe maximum milega wo global maxima ban jayega jaha pe minimum mil raha hai wo global minima ban jayega clear okay now let me move on to the next question now now this one i'll leave this to you guys you have to do this question this question find the maximum and minimum values of x plus sin 2x on 0 to 2 pi start doing this question now start doing this question now it's the last question of this particular session find the maximum and minimum values of x plus sin 2x on 0 to 2 pi so what i'm going to do is uh, so i think uh, one and a half hour has been completed anyway so ye question main aapke liye homework de raha hu anyway tomorrow same time 3 o'clock we'll be starting with a new session which will be miscellaneous problems on application of derivatives tomorrow's session is very very important i'm going to discuss a very very important and very very complicated problems of application of derivatives okay so make sure that you don't miss the tomorrow's session and tomorrow you get the answer of this one okay aap ye note kar do aapko you have not drink a single drop of water it's okay it's okay jayesh don't worry about me but what i'm saying now is thoda uh, sir thoda zyada pad lo na uh jayesh that is what see uh tanay this entire course is on calculus so today humne kya kiya hai humne increasing decreasing ke bare mein padha hai then we discussed about local maxima local minima global maxima global minima and then we discussed about critical points stationary points we discussed about point of inflection and we have seen the problems relating to this concepts so tomorrow i'll be dealing with application of derivatives but some very very important questions which have been asked in the previous cbse board examinations वो थोड़ा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है इसलिए मैं वो कल के क्लास में वो पूरा क्वेश्चन करवा दूंगा सो इन दिस क्लास आई हैव डिस्कस्ड आई हैव डन ए क्विक रिवीजन ऑफ योर एप्लीकेशन ऑफ डेरिवेटिव कॉन्सेप्ट्स ओके एनी डाउट्स इन दिस इन दिस क्लास गाइस यू हैव एनी डाउट्स सर योर साउथ इंडियन या आई एम साउथ इंडियन आई एम साउथ इंडियन बेसिकली आई एम फ्रॉम हैदराबाद डोंट वरी अबाउट दैट पर्टिकुलर ऑल दोज थिंग्स सो दिस क्वेश्चन प्लीज डू दिस क्वेश्चन इन योर होम ओके so you do this question get the answer of this one so tomorrow same time 3 o'clock we'll meet again you can just uh, tell me the answer of this one i'll tell you whether your answer is right or wrong okay so any doubts in this session guys you have any doubts in this session today or uh, if you want to give you if you, want, if you want me to give any feedback you can give it to me why don't you extend your lecture actually i have extended it man it's already 2 minutes i think one and a half hours is zyada ho gaya 2 minutes zyada ho gaya एनीवे सी आई थिंक द सेशन इज लाइक और क्वेश्चन भी बाकी नहीं है सिर्फ ये एक क्वेश्चन ही है ओके लेट मी डू वन थिंग विल सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन एंड विल वाइंड अप द लेक्चर इज इट ओके और विल यू डू इट ऑन योर ओन व्हाट अबाउट व्हाट व्हाट डू यू से गाइस शुड आई सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन और शुड आई वाइंड अप द वाइंड अप द लेक्चर नाउ लेट्स डू इट ओके फाइन विल स्टार्ट ऑन इट ओके वेरी गुड दैट्स द स्पिरिट दैट्स द स्पिरिट परफेक्ट f of x is equal to x plus साइन टू एक्स वेरी गुड एक्स प्लस साइन टू एक्स नव क्या करना है फाइन द मैक्म एंड मिनिम वैल्यूज फाइन करना है बिटवीन जीरो टू टू पाइव ओके सो टेल मी वेदर द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट लोकल मैक्म लोकल मिनिमा और ग्लोबल मैक्म और ग्लोबल मिनिमा यहां पर कुछ नहीं दिया क्वेश्चन में क्वेश्चन में तो कुछ नहीं दिया है दैट फाइन लोकल मैक्म लोकल मिनिमा बट जस्ट सींग द इंटरवेल आई टोल यू जस्ट बाई सींग द इंटरवेल यू गेट एन आइडिया दैट द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट ग्लोबल मैक्म एंड ग्लोबल मिनिमा परफेक्ट तो अभी क्या करना है आई हैव टू फाइंड आउट द क्रिटिकल पॉइंट ओके सो एफ डैश ऑफ एक्स क्या मिलेगा आपको वन प्लस टू टाइम्स ऑफ वन प्लस टू टाइम्स ऑफ कॉस टू एक्स ओके वन प्लस टू टाइम्स ऑफ कॉस टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो राइट सो वॉट इज टू टाइम्स ऑफ कॉस टू एक्स वैल्यू टू कॉस टू एक्स इज बेसिकली इक्वल टू माइनस वन मैक्सिम वैल्यू इज टू पाई ओके वेरी गुड यू ऑलरेडी गॉट एन आंसर यू लेट बी चेक इट आउट कॉस टू एक्स का वैल्यू माइनस वन बाई टू आएगा सो टू एक्स का वैल्यू कितना आएगा वॉट इज माइनस वन बाई टू सर ग्लोबल में इंटरवल भी दिया रहेगा श्योर ग्लोबल का मतलब ही इंटरवल में डिस्कस करना है द क्वेश्चन इज ग्लोबल डेफिनेटली द इंटरवल विल बी गिवन फॉर यू ओके सो यू सी दिस वन सो फॉर कॉस टू एक्स इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन बाई टू वॉट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ टू एक्स माइनस वन बाई टू का मतलब कॉस नेगेटिव कहां पर होगा in the second and third coordinate right so it might be so this will be maybe 2 pi by 3 or it may be uh pi plus pi by 3 kya hoga 4 pi by 3 samajh mein aa gaya clear 
cos inverse minus 1 by 2 what cos inverse 1 by 2 1 uh, 120 what is 120 maximum value no see i'm i'm i'll i explain the method for you guys you can directly get the answer answer to sabhi log ko mil jayega isme kuch nahi hai it's a difficult question nahi hai so first i'm finding the critical points here critical points mil gaya so 1 plus 2 times of cos 2x is equal to 0 from this i got cos 2x is equal to minus 1 by 2 so cos is negative in the second and third coordinates second coordinate mein kahan pe hoga ye 2 pi by 3 and third four third coordinate mein 4 pi by 3 right so x is equal to i'll get pi by 3 and 2 pi by 3 here right sir i got it 3 pi by 8 3 pi by 8 ka aap se aa gaya bhai sabko i think you'll not get 3 pi by 8 isko differentiate karo aap pratik differentiate this you'll get 1 plus 2 times of cos 2x equated to 0 2 cos 2x is equal to minus 1 cos 2x is equal to minus 1 by 2 aayega aapke liye so 2x kya hoga cos 2x negative hai negative hai cos is positive in first and fourth quadrant and negative in the second and third quadrants right sir maximum is 2 pi and minimum is 0 okay fine we'll see we'll see man so x is equal to pi by 3 2 pi by 3 two values mil gaya and we also have to include 0 pi by 3 2 pi by 3 and 2 pi. Okay. So what is your answer? What is your answer, Bhavish? Maximum is at 2 pi and minimum is at 0. Right. Minimum to 0 pe hoga and maximum kaha pe hoga? <coughs> maximum kaha pe hoga? 2 pi ke pas hoga. Right. Perfect. Right. So see what you have to do now. You have to substitute these values in this particular function. So find out f of 0. F of 0 to 0 milega apko. What is f of uh, pi by 3? What is f of pi by 3? It is basically pi by three plus sine of two pi by three. What is sine of two pi by three value? Root three by two, right? Perfect. And what about f of two pi by three value? F of two pi by three का मतलब क्या हो गया? Two pi by three, okay? Plus sine of four pi by three, which is in the third quadrant. So यहाँ पे आपको minus root three by two मिलेगा, okay? And what about the last value f of two pi? It is basically two pi. Plus zero, right? You can observe one thing. This is a positive value. Okay, this is a positive value, but uh, this might be around. Uh, you can just see this is basically three point one four, right? Or ये one point seven three two है. तो आपका answer may be around three से ऊपर होगा, right? And यहाँ पे भी ऐसे ही है. This is basically two into three point one four divided by three minus root three by two. This would be greater than zero, and this would be maximum. This value. <coughs> f of 2 pi is maximum and f of 0 is basically minimum so this is minimum value this is your maximum value that is global maximum clear yes so just summarize the steps you are taken see again i am telling you the same method for finding global maxima and global minima first thing is that you have to find out the stationary points stationary points find karne ke baad kya karna chahiye <coughs> you have to include the end points 0 as well as 2 pi okay then you have to find out the values of the function at this particular points clear so any doubt in this case guys any doubt in this case any doubt in this today session <coughs> right perfect very good perfect so sir you are the best thank you okay uh, sir cos inverse of minus 1 by 2 we take as uh, pi Minus cos inverse of one by two. Uh, Pratik, that is inverse trigonometry equation. Uh, I don't. I'm not getting your qu question exactly, Pratik. It's okay. We can discuss that same question tomorrow. Tomorrow, same time, three o'clock. The chapter is the next tomorrow session would be on miscellaneous problems on application of derivatives. So make sure that you subscribe to this particular class so that you'll get the notification on time. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm.